in a pack of 10, which you can purchase from Strawberry Net. Um, along with all of the other products that I talk about today. Now this is my first time trying sheet masks, so I was pretty excited. Now the actual sheet mask is actually artificial silk and it feels quite um, funny when you first put it on. Well at least for me it did. This is my first time using a sheet mask. Um, it feels quite sticky and a little bit slimy, um, a bit weird. So after 15 minutes I removed the sheet mask and then patted the remaining product into my skin but it didn't really soak into my skin. Now I'm not sure if that is because I have oily skin. I don't have dry, I don't have normal or combination, I am just oily all over. So it might have been my type of skin that it just didn't sink into. Um, I even woke up the next day still feeling that stickiness on my skin. I feel like these would be excellent for someone with dry skin um, because they are so moisturizing. Next we have the, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, um, Laniage Moisture Trial Kit which has four little bottles of different things that they offer. Now I first used the uh, Power Essential Skin Refiner which is like a toner for your skin. It has a lovely fragrance to it. Uh, the next one that I used on my skin is the Water Bank Gel Cream. Now this one is for normal to combination skin types. So it suits my skin type a lot better. It sinks into your skin really well so don't be afraid if you have oily skin like myself. And then the last two bottles are just different moisturizers. The water bank essence uh, is for all skin types. To me it feels pretty much the same as the other one which is the uh, balancing emulsion for dry and normal skin types. These two are too heavy for my skin because I have oily skin they're too heavy but they would be perfect for someone with dry or normal skin. Next up we have a product from Oshi and this is the Multi Shine Base Secret Balm. Now when I first pulled this out of the box I thought oh my goodness this is so beautiful. It looks like a really super high-end product um, for such a good price. So you uh, pull off the lid and then inside the bottom half is the Multi Shine Base product. I absolutely love these type of, of pumps. So basically you pump this to get the product which comes out of there. I like to use it as a moisturizer before my foundation. Um, so I will take just a little bit rub it through my fingers, rub it all over my face. It has a really subtle, beautiful purple sheen to it. It is so pretty. And then in the lid is the concealer. And there's also a nice little mirror in there, which I think is a lovely touch. This concealer is very, very light, so it's not going to be a good concealer for everyone. I have uh, NC20 skin, so it's quite bright on me. So I used it under my eyes today. And it's a cream, so it's quite thick. It goes on lovely with a brush. If you use your finger, it can look a little bit cakey. It's also very pigmented. It lasts for probably around four or five hours, and then it starts to fade. Uh, you definitely have to uh, set it with powder, otherwise it will crease. But before I applied that concealer, I used the Oshi Magic Glow CC Multi Cushion uh, Foundation. Now this one says it's uh, it has an SPF of 50 plus which I think is fantastic. Uh, it's anti-wrinkle whitening and it gives the perfect coverage. Now this foundation is actually a pretty good match for me. I'm just gonna say the packaging is so beautiful. It's got this lovely design on the uh, lid. And then on top we have the little sponge that you use for the foundation and then a lid closing the foundation which I think is fantastic because it doesn't dry it out then underneath is the cushion system. Now I've never used a foundation like this before and I think it's fantastic. So you just get your little sponge that comes with it, you press into the foundation and then you just press it all over your skin and that's what I did today and it gives a lovely coverage. I wouldn't say it is full coverage and I wouldn't say it's light. It's definitely medium and it's definitely buildable. I was very pleasantly surprised with this foundation because I struggle a lot with foundation because I have such oily skin. Practically every foundation just doesn't work on me. But this one worked out really nice. It gave a nice natural finish. Lastly for my lips, I use when she's here with us today, Stevie Nick. <laughs> Henry.
memories do those songs evoke for you? Because actually, it's, you're one of those bands that we can pin memories to all of your songs. But what are they? What are yours? Me too. <laughs> what was going on with Lindsay and I was exactly what are in those songs. So they, when I see them, then my I go right back to what was happening at that time. Are they always happy? Happy times? Not always happy, but now I can look at them and see a lot more fun and happiness in them than I think I did when they were actually happening. Mm. You know, so now they're precious. At the time they were happening, they were just crazy. Well, yeah, you two were so turbulent, but it, but it created great art, didn't it? So it was kind of like great tragedy, a no great pain, art. no gain. Yeah. 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 Does it pain, feel like it? Does, does it feel like it was yesterday to you when you look there? You, are you straight back there? It, yeah. Oh, that's Absolutely. fantastic. Yeah. Because you know when you see a photograph, then that that's great. But you can go back a little bit. But when you see it on film, you can, then that yeah. really creates yeah. it. Then you really are right back in, remembering kind of what you were wearing and remembering those earrings, and you know then it, then you really it brings it back. And yeah. what about now? What does it, how do you feel it's changed now? Do you, do you like it still? Like that business? Singing? I love it. Do you still? She goes, singing. Um, <laughs> I do. I, I love it. Do yeah. you? Otherwise, I wouldn't still be doing it. No. I would have, you know, moved on to some other artistic kind of endeavor. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, I know I love it. And I love performing. I'm a performer, you know. I'm, you know, we're all talking about Beyonce. You're a performance artist. If you're a performance artist, you're going to have a lot of trouble giving it up because that's what you love to do since you were in the second grade. Yeah. If you're a, if you're just a, you know, like Christine McPhee, she's a pianist and she wanted to be one of the boys. So she wanted to be over there on the side. She was not at all unhappy when Lindsay and I came into the group and came in as lead singers because she didn't want to be out there with a microphone. She didn't want to do that. She didn't want to dance and she wanted to play and she wanted to be one of the guys. And in a, in a good in a good way, because she was the only girl that was the great musician that was one of the guys and that was as much respected as, like, the Eric Clapton's, you know, and the Lindsey Buckingham's and the Mick Fleetwood's. She was one of them. Mm -hmm. So she didn't want to be... She didn't want to be doing that. You get the fo you're the focus of attention if you're in the front. Yeah, you? she how, do you, how, do you, how do you feel about that? Is that well, something I love it because again, I'm a performance artist also. Um, so if you love that, you know, when I was like in four years old, I had a grandfather who sang country music, and my dad. You'll love this. You'll love this. Never mind. Her. Um, <laughs> we had a bar. We owned a bar that was right across the street because my dad started working for Canadian Labatt's and Lucky Lager Beer when I was like really three years old. And so my granddad used to, me, I used to stop there on the way home from school, for, like at four. And he used to Not put for me a up beer. In a, yes. You know. For you to have a beer. Well, for kindergarten, like, you know. No, but I used to go into the bar before it opened, you know. And my granddad would sit me up on the table and I'd be like tap dancing and, you know. And, and, and my dad would go like, oh. You were always going to do off. what you do. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, last night, um, Hayley has emailed in. She was, uh, she was in Hyde Park watching you with the, uh, with the great Rod Stewart. She said, how was it for you? It was great. The only thing that wasn't great was the sun, the magnificent English sun that never showed itself for three weeks while I'd been here. That was just like this, and it was so bright that I was, you know, it was so disconcerting because it was so bright I couldn't see. Um, but the concert was fantastic. I just kept putting my hand in front of it, which you can cover the sun with your hand. Um, it was fantastic. And you don't, we don't play that monstrous of shows that often. We play eight to 10,000, 10,000 to 15,000 people. That's way more than that. So that energy coming up off that energy is huge. And it's spectacular. I mean, there's no getting, you can't, you can't yeah. beat it, really. Yeah. So it was fantastic. And really, I just wanted to come over here and play. So, you know, my record comes out tomorrow. Yes, we new played record. yesterday. I mean, no, tomorrow. <laughs> today. Yeah. The record comes out today. Hey, <laughs> I'm jet lagged. Today still. or tomorrow? Right. It comes out today. Today's Monday. Today's yeah. Monday. Okay, it comes out today. But yesterday, it was coming out tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Dyslexic, right? Yeah. So, it's okay. out. So it's out, right. So we wanted, you know, I wanted to go on stage yesterday and just be completely rocking and fantastic. And because the record was coming out the next day. Right. Um, so anyway, you know, I, uh, but so I think it happened. It's, it's called, um, what is it called? It's in um, your dreams. In your dreams. The album's Can't in remember. your dreams and the secret, your dreams. secret love. And secret love is a and single. And you worked and on this record with Dave Stewart, who is just a great British singer-songwriter. Um, oh, I wish he was singer -songwriter. with us. And you, you stole him away. Woman. He would love being here. He liked him. He would, he he would love being be right company. here. Yes, he would. He's a really bright guy, Dave. And when he dedicates himself to something, he's really, really committed. So you, you invited him over to your house, and he pretty much didn't leave for a year, did he? 
Pretty much. I mean, he did. He went home. But uh, he came like two, four, sometimes four times, sometimes five times a week. And we worked from three until, you know, midnight. We had catered dinners every night. So we were kind of like being in the 20s, like Coco Chanel and Man Ray and all the artists and the famous writers. That's what we kind of did. So we, it was like we would call it in America in the 60s, a happening. It was a happening. It was beautiful. Dave dresses up. So when Dave dresses up and he's filming, you dress, you ha you're forced to kind of dress up a little. Uh, or you look really See, dowdy next like to Dave. You know? the first thing in the morning, he's got a camera so in your face. Yes, he does. But and I, and I could have turned that down. Can I say, you wrote poetry. Wrote, you write a lot of poetry. Yes. And as a performer, which is very extrovert, I'm fascinated that then that's very introverted. And Dave Stewart, actually, didn't he start you off with poetry the first time? I gave time him uh, 40 pages of poetry in January 2010. And he actually, surprised to me, read it. I was so That's thrilled why and so honored, you know. He read it. And so he, he came over two weeks later and he said basically, he's got a guitar around his neck and he's like, all right, I like this poem. And I'm like, you do, really? You read it? You actually read it? And so he says, okay, let's go. And it's like, dun 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 dun, dun. let's go. And I'm like kind of sing-songy reading my, my poem and all of a sudden, in about ten minutes, we had read a really fantastic song. Well, here it is. We've got a, a clip from the video. So this, this is what started as a poem and ended up as sweet, beautiful music. She was twirling her own batons in that way. Oh, wedding. really? That's again, my well, mom taught me when I was like really so little, I don't even remember her teaching me. But I'm a really good baton twirler. So, <laughs> of course, Dave's like, well, could you let's play, let's do some Any baton skills? twirling. Yeah. Sure, I mean, last night, you weren't the only woman uh, playing a major festival. Uh, did you see any Beyonce set? Like yourself, I came home from my set when I should have like taken the shower, washed the hair, done the whole thing over for today sat on the table in front of the TV and watched the entire set of Beyonce. And, and by the time, like yourself, it was over, I was like super exhausted. I was like, oh, my set was hard, but this set that I just did with Beyonce was like super difficult. <laughs> I'm dancing and I'm, you, you too, right? And it was, it was, it was like, I know her. I have known her since Bootylicious because she wrote Bootylicious from da 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 from my yeah. riff. So 50% Stevie Nicks, 50% Beyonce Knowles. So it's, we, and I know her from when she was a lot, so that was many years ago. So she, I've watched her grow up. So um, I saw her as a little twig girl, you know, whenever that was, many years ago. And I, and she, you know what, what I love about Beyonce is this.